Hey guys, Hazards280 here. Just coming at you with another car review video for you. This one's a 2014 Buick Regal GS all-wheel drive. And the all-wheel drive is actually kind of hard to come by, but we live in Michigan and it was a vehicle that we really looked for for quite a while. And so we found one with the rims we liked, the GS variant, and the color that we liked and kind of snagged it up about a year ago. This one actually belongs to my other half and like I said, she's had it for about a year and we've really liked the vehicle. Uh, we come from a household that actually uh, really like our fast, uh, I don't say fast, but our, our quick vehicles. So we've uh, had a G8, uh, I got a Charger Scat Pack, I've had um, Grand Cherokees with the 5.7 liter V8, and uh, Grand Prix GXPs a while back, and just some vehicles that typically we have V8s, I guess, in our household. So when we went to a turbocharged four cylinder, was quite the change for us. But I'm going to explain to you as to why we did that. Uh, number one, we really like the looks of this Regal. Uh, it's actually an Opel Insignia, so this is actually coming from Europe. Uh, but it just has nice lines. These rims really make the GS stand out. These are an optional 20-inch rim. We have tinted the windows here, so you can see that's one change. And then that is a Brembo, cal a Brembo caliper, excuse me, on a Buick Regal. So that kind of starts off what I'm going to go with as kind of the theme of this video here is really where it starts right here with Buick. When people think of Buick, they think of, you know, a Buick LaCrosse or a uh, Buick Century or something like that, you know, an older person's vehicle. And when this came out, you know, GM was, when they, these Regals first started coming out in 2010, I believe, GM was going through a lot of... Uh, tough times and they needed to get their demographic for Buick down so they could actually enter a, get, Basically get into that larger range of people in age groups and with the Regal GS they were able to do that They did a lot of things that we liked on this that really attracted us to the GS only little things such as this uh, Badging for Buick being black instead of red white and blue really gives it a better look You can see the front end you have uh, almost like a fang in the front as an intake you have your Brembo brakes, the 20 inch wheels. These are wrapped in a 255 35ZR20. And then coming around to the back, this was refreshed for the 14 model year to have a different rear end. You can see they have the GS all wheel drive designation. You do have dual, dual exhaust here. Those are metal pieces here. So, um, kind of a bucker to clean if you want the truth. Uh, they do look nice, gives it a nice look on the road, kind of a hunkered down look. And then we have switched out some of these lights that are standardly incandescent to LED. But I do like the way this looks here. You do have a trunk release right here in the bottom. It is hidden. And then also you have those black shields. The third brake light is tinted from the factory. This could have been red and I think that would have taken away from the look. And you can see you do have your rear park sense sensors as well. I do like the way they incorporated the spoiler here. Uh, it's very clean. Uh, just, it's not too gaudy, but still has a nice presence behind it too, so that's nice. You can see the rears do not have Brembo's. You do have one touch entry on your keypad. And the same with the front wheels. So, numbers wise, right? That's all the, those are all important numbers. And one thing I'm gonna get to with this is really where it makes the power. And those are the advantages with a turbocharged vehicle is they're gonna make torque down low. And this is something that you really tell with this Regal. So from the factory, the Regal GS made 270 horsepower at 5,300 RPM and 295 foot pounds of torque at 2,500 RPM. Now that's on a two liter four cylinder engine. That's a lot of power out of that size engine, guys. I mean, in all, in all due respect, that was a great job by GM. Now, the turbo on this can go up to 24 PSI max. I have checked this with uh, uh, a tool called Torque where I plug in a little scanner in the vehicle, and I've seen it up to 20 uh, in just daily driving. So all that torque is coming on at 2,500 RPM. So that means you're not having to rev this engine super high to get it to go. In fact, when she drives this and I drive it, it's great the, with the fact that when you're driving, a simple acceleration out of a stoplight all that torque is available down low so you really get that good solid pull out of the vehicle and it's that's just stock so obviously the aftermarket industry has offered a lot for these and 
with the Haldex all-wheel drive system, you know, you, it can actually transfer up to 90% of the power to the rear wheels, and it does have electronic limited slip differentials, so it's going to go when, it, when you want to go. So, and that's been proven in this winter here. We've got a lot of snow, and right now we actually don't, but it's, we've had a lot of snow, and it's been great for us, and we don't even have snow tires on it at this point. But with a simple tune through like Trifecta, you can actually gain 80 foot pounds of torque and up to 60 horsepower out of this engine. So looking at that dyno chart, it's actually putting down to the ground 300 foot pounds of torque out of a two liter engine. So take into consideration drivetrain loss and things like that, you're actually looking at like 380, 400 foot pounds of torque coming out of a two liter engine. So, I mean, those are the real numbers. If you wanna go and check them for me, you can, but that's right on Trifecta's website. So those kind of numbers in an all-wheel drive vehicle for me are stupendous. You know, we really like that. Uh, it's a great driving vehicle. The seats, when we get inside, you'll see how those look. And it's just been a great vehicle for us. So we'll dive into it here and really take a good look at it. If you guys have any questions along the way, just feel free to comment below. Give me a like if this video is helpful for you. I like to make the car buying experience for people when they're doing their research a little easier. I'm way too OCD when I'm looking for vehicles, and I always wish I had a vehicle such as, or a, a video such as this to reference upon. So, getting inside the vehicle here, I'm gonna close the door so I can get rid of that beep. You can see you do have a carbon fiber type appearance here on the door. It is not true carbon fiber, but it is an appearance. Nice door handle has a nice solid feel behind it. Lock and unlock, power mirror buttons. You can see it does say Regal GS right there. And it actually just had it, but you'll see Regal uh, right within the screen as well. And you notice there's uh, quite the large screen that this uh, vehicle has in the center. It makes good use of it as well. You do have automatic bi xenon headlamps. Your steering wheel here, you can see, is just a great meaty steering wheel. It's actually a flat bottom here. It is heated. And all of these toggles are actually metal. So I just think that's a great, it has a great feel behind it when you're actually using it. And over here as well, you can see these are metal with a good tactical feel. So steering wheel in this car is actually one of my favorite things about it. When you go and drive it, it just has a nice solid feel. A lot of GMs in the past have had these little little pansy little steering wheels and I've, I've always hated them. So I think they did a great job there. Looking at the center stack and coming down, you can see they have kept this faux carbon fiber, although with some, with some mild plastics. And they do have a shiny bit here of trim. Uh, we have actually mentioned that this has reflected back in our eyes going down the road in sunny days, and it's kind of hard to keep clean. So with was one thing I wish they would have used something different for this inner piece here, but I think they were just trying to get some chrome inside the vehicle. Coming along the edge here, you can see there is the aluminum as well. And the same with the door panel. It does have an optional, or actually this is not, it's standard on the GS, but there is a Bose sound system in here. It sounds very nice, very crisp, very clear. No complaints. Looking up at the top here, you can see there is a home link controls. You have just your standard controls with lighting and then your sunroof controls as well. And we'll open that up in just a second. Now looking at pricing on this vehicle. So I'm not going to stand here or sit here, I guess rather, and say that this is a Audi S4 killer or a BMW M3 or anything. It, it's not. That's not its intention. Going against Put your Audi A4 2.0 Ts, this is your 323, 325 CIs, or not CIs, but I, whatever you'd like. But it's going against those entry level German vehicles with an all wheel drive turbo engine in a US domestic market here. So those vehicles, as you know, can cost upwards of fifty, sixty thousand $60,000, depending on how you option them out. And this one is fully loaded. So looking at that and looking at the price, it's really a great value. So looking at the sheet here, you can see this door, this vehicle's full price was $52,925, or $42,000 rather. Excuse me, $52,000 would not be that good of a deal. Uh, this, the power sunroof was $1,000 and the wheels were $700. And I do know that these wheels demand quite a premium in the aftermarket. The 19-inch wheels just don't really set the GS off properly, I believe. And in the used market, it really pays to have those 20-inch wheels. There was uh, summer-only wheels elected on this one originally. These are not the stock wheels on it now. 
and you can see there's also a driver conf confidence package for $890, which includes a following distance sensor, forward collision alert, rear cross traffic, lane departure, and well, I guess you can read as well. So parts content, US 66% and Mexico 17%. Uh, final assembly point was in Ontario, country of origin is engine, United States, transmission, United States. So that's nice to see. Looking at your crash ratings here, you can see driver side, five star, passenger side, four star, and four star on the rollover on that personal rental crash. So 22 MPG combined, 19 city, 27 highway. And that's actually the same, depending on if you get the front wheel drive or the all wheel drive. And you can see some of the standard features there as well if you want to just hold and pause the video. So one thing we do like is the powertrain is six year, 70,000 miles. That's pretty long in comparison to some of them anymore. And there was also a four year, 50,000 mile bumper to bumper with scheduled maintenance for two years, 24,000. So we, we have had some small issues go on with this Regal. Uh, we had a wheel bearing that failed on us and actually the rear drive shaft uh, gave us some issues. And the rear drive shaft was covered. The wheel bearing wasn't. The car didn't really have that many miles on it. So I guess for us, the vehicle, we love, 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 love the vehicle, but GM's service and warranty work is not on par with what we've had with the Grand Cherokees and all of the Fiat Chrysler vehicles. Those ones have given us up to 100,000 mile powertrain and they were fixing parts on the car at 98,000 miles. So with no questions asked. So I think in terms of warranty support and in the future, I think that Fiat Chrysler really, really just destroys GM in that regard. But you know, they also don't make an all-wheel drive vehicle that's turbocharged. So, you know, you just got to take with what you can get or get what you can take. So looking at these seats here, you can see they are nicely bolstered. They really hold you in quite nicely. I do like the white stitching that's within them. And these really are actually quite deep. So if you're a big guy, you might want to go sit in one of these first because you might not be that comfortable. Corey really, really likes them. She's a rather small person. And... Uh, it really holds her in the vehicle quite well. You can see this, that while the floor mats are quite dirty, they do have GS designated on them as well. Opening this up, you can see a nice feel behind it. You do have a power outlet or a 12 volt outlet. She has a radar, which I unplugged for the video, but it she needs it. So, And looking at your climate control here, this is on and off. You do have a CD player. Simple controls, your heated seat controls are actually within these monitors, which I'll go through in just one second. And then looking at the rear, you can see the same seat styling, same deep uh, recesses in the seat, and then you do have a fold down center armrest. All right. You do have a electronic parking brake, little storage spot here. I have no idea what this is for. I haven't really figured that out. And then right here, this slides back for your cup holders. And you can open this up and you have some storage within here as well. Although she does have her iPod and stuff plugged in. And then here you have a USB input, two USB inputs, a simple three and a half millimeter, and then an SD card input as well. And then another 12 volt outlet. We will say that that's hard to get to with how deep it is within that uh, recess. So let's go ahead and start the vehicle and take a look at how it, the gate to the startup screen at least looks like. Let's see, it does say Buick IntelliLink. And then you have a full sweep, and we need to do an oil change, so disregard. So uh, just generally nice look behind it, looks quite clean and clear. And then I will go through the infotainment system at the end of the video, so you guys, if you guys are interested in that, just please hold off to the end. I'll put in the, in the description below the actual time that I, actually, I start that uh, video review of the entertainment system. So looking at the center cluster here, you can see yeah, what's, what's covered here, but you've got your uh, coolant temp, your speedometer, your uh, voltmeter, or excuse me, yeah, engine, engine battery voltage, and then you have your fuel uh, level, your coolant temp, I guess that's a redundant gauge. So you can actually change those, I believe, but I guess I never realized that. And then a uh, tack, so quite nice. You can see the engine has a little, your typical four cylinder sound to it, but when you're actually driving the vehicle and you're getting on it, I guess I'll say, you really don't hear much inside the cabin. It's very quiet. When we first went to look at this, she was concerned about it sounding too much like a four cylinder and 
he really doesn't have that issue. It's very quiet, and we'll get to that later on when I do the video to actually impression of driving. You can change quite a bit within this menu as well. So if you want, you can go to trip meters. You have GS information that's on here. Your G forces. You've got oil temp, you've got oil pressure, battery voltage, and then back to that. You can go to audio where you have the song that's playing. And I think you can actually, if you're on a Kexum radio and stuff, you can control what you're seeing on there. You have your phones and navigation. I believe it will actually show you on a map where you're at. So I thought that was quite interesting, I guess. So if you're actually navigating, it'll kind of show where you need to turn and you can follow it on here while this is doing something different. And then back to settings. So you can change this from what you're seeing now on a screen to something a little less sporty, but we just like this GS designation. If you actually turn on GS mode, you can see it has a glowing outer ring when you turn on GS mode, which I'll talk about in a second. So at the top of the screen here, you can see there's a GS button, a stability control button. This is your lane keep assist, park assist, and then a sport button, which is kind of in the middle between that and GS. So GS actually changes your shift points. It changes uh, the suspension. So there's actually a three mode suspension. So it definitely gets a lot firmer when you turn on GS mode. And it just changes the vehicle's driving dynamics. It really makes it be more focused into performance versus your standard, uh, you know, perhaps fuel economy target that it's looking for. But it really, really definitely has a difference in the two there. One thing I do like is when you turn off the traction control, you can turn off stability control as well, and you can do that rolling down the road. So with an all-wheel drive vehicle, it's really fun. You know, you go in a snow-covered parking lot, and it is a true all-wheel drive. I mean, it can just fling around, have all the fun you want in the world, and uh, it doesn't try to stop you. So not every vehicle lets you do that. All right, I'll open up the sunroof real quick for you so you can see how far that goes back. Okay. That's gonna close now. And let's take a look at the engine bay. crazy here. You can see the turbo is actually right inside. But pretty simple for the most part. I really have no idea what this tube is. I've always tried to figure that out. If anybody knows what this is for, please let me know. I assume it gets quite warm since there's a, a heat shield right there. But I've never been able to figure that out. I don't know if it's a... I have no idea what it is. Alright guys, forgot one thing. want to comment on it real quick. So these are your controls to your climate system, and you can see it does pop up on the center screen once you do make an adjustment. And we, we don't mind these, we kind of understand where GM was going with it, but there are times that it doesn't always pick up what we want it to do. I mean, it does okay, it's just something that we would rather there be a tactical button for. And then you can press that button for your heated seats, and we will say they are extremely hot and they get hot quickly. So GM does a great job with heated seats, and Chrysler does a terrible job with that. So. Every brand has their pros and cons, and GM's pro here is really, they can they can warm up your rear end pretty quickly. So they've done a great job with that too. All right, let's go through the entertainment options within this 2014 Buick Regal GS all-wheel drive. This is, in, this is a Buick IntelliLink system, which is very similar to a lot of GM's offerings. There's just some slight variations between the different brands. So you have audio, phone, phone, this is your voice control for the phone, navigation, OnStar, weather, Pandora, and settings. So this is not my car, number one. This is my other half, so a lot of this is kind of new to me as I'm going through this, but we'll see how interactive it is for a new user. If you go to audio, you can see she's listening to Zombie by the Cranberries. Not gonna have that on too long or I'll get a copyright claim, but it is there. Uh, you do have your instant access to voice recognition and then some menu options for your volume. So that is there, quite easy to use. Shortcuts along the bottom for XM radio. I know she doesn't use that because the actual way of interacting with XM radio is very cumbersome within the system. She doesn't like that she can't see what's on the different stations as she goes through like she could in the 2011 Grand Cherokee. 
So one thing to think about with that, uh, you can press the media button here at the bottom and now it's gonna go to your, your Bluetooth connection. You do have a uh, CD in here that you can go to and then an iPad, iPod. So you can actually go through your media in that, in that fashion. Then you can go straight to your radio if you'd like. Pretty simple. And then obviously when you're in your media uh, portion, you can skip through your tracks by pressing this button. This is your eject for your CD player. And CD loads in. So you do have access to your phone book here as well. I'm not gonna dive too deep in this due to the, some of the privacy is obviously with this. All right, and jumping over to navigation, you can see that it's a very full detailed map. I'm not gonna zoom in unfortunately for that, but uh, you can see that it does look quite nice. I will say that as we're going through and going places with this, it's always taken us a very quick and efficient route. I know and sometimes these navigation systems may not be that efficient, but it's really done a great job. In fact, it actually routed us around a long traffic jam once automatically, and we saved like a 35 minute delay. So it does a great job, we really enjoy it, and we tend to use it pretty much any time we can. All right, and then returning back to the home screen, you can see that you do have additional settings. You have access to Pandora, now that does use your phone's data stream, and then your weather as well. So settings, you have valet mode, things along those lines, camera, all those jazz, and you have quick little pop-up button to your bottom, to your quick access to your radio, you know, one-touch buttons. And this does slide if you wanna go to your next screen. Now I'm going to try clicking on weather. I have no idea what this is going to do. So that uses XM Travel Link. We don't use that. But then Pandora, I'll see if this works. I'm really not sure. So it might be something you have to set up because right now Pandora is not directly connecting, but it does go through your phone. And I, we've used it once before and I know it works just fine. So, all right. If you guys have any questions, please comment below and I will be happy to answer them for you. Thank you and make it a great day. All right guys, now we're in the driving portion of the review on this Regal. So right now I'm driving in a normal driving mode, just going down a normal road really. And I do not have GS mode on, but I'm gonna kick it on here and I'm gonna see if you guys can actually notice how much more the body moves and how firm the actual suspension is. So I'm pressing it on now. And just over some of these bumps here, I'm really feeling a lot firmer ride. Now you really feel it in the corners as well, but it makes such a difference in how the vehicle drives and also how firm the steering is. So just a big difference there. And I really like how that changes the dynamics of the vehicle. And I really think it helps, I just turned it off, but I really think that makes helps really make the vehicle what it is. Or at least helps bring that attention on GM's part ahead further. So you can get a turbo version of this. I think it's just called the T. Now uh, it's equal, roughly equal torque. It has the same torque numbers, but it just comes on at 3000 RPM versus 2500. And, but it doesn't have the same three mode suspension. It doesn't have Rumble brakes. And I think those are all things that come into play. So, uh, you know, it's just a well-rounded vehicle. It has all those parts and components to really make it what it is. does what you need without revving the six grand. And that's something I've always hated about a, a vehicle that wasn't a V8, it just didn't have the torque available. So to get going quickly, you had to rev it. And I don't know that this vehicle really gets too above four grand too often since, you know, I just have to hit the gas right here lightly and we're not even at 3000 RPM and I'm accelerating just fine. And it feels solid. So that's one thing that we really, really like for this vehicle. daily driver there's it has no issues getting out of its own way and although I you know I did rev there obviously but it does just 
just fine. And it's just a pleasure to drive. If you get in some nice corner, corner, you know, nice curvy roads and stuff, it just does what you're asking for. And really there's no room for body rolls. So I'm just very pleased with the vehicle and I know she is as well. that was a nice pretty decent stop and did just fine. 